J.D. Vance's closing remarks strike a chord with core conservative ideals like personal responsibility, limited government, and expanding economic opportunity. His critique of Kamala Harris's policies stems from a belief that her administration has failed to address the economic hardships facing everyday Americans. Vance stresses the need for government to foster individual prosperity and economic freedom, using rising energy costs, housing instability, and community safety as key examples. Senator Vance, your closing statement. Well, I want to thank Governor Waltz, uh, you, you folks at CBS, and of course the American people for tuning in this evening. And one of the issues we didn't talk about was energy. And I remember when I was being raised by my grandmother, when she didn't have enough money to turn on the heat some nights because Ohio gets pretty cold at night and because money was often very tight. And I believe, as a person who wants to be your next vice president, that we are a rich and prosperous enough country where every American, whether they're rich or poor, ought to be able to turn on their heat in the middle of a cold winter night. That's gotten more difficult, thanks to Kamala Harris's energy policies. I believe that whether you're rich or poor, you ought to be able to afford a nice meal for your family. That's gotten harder because of Kamala Harris's policies. I believe that whether you're rich or poor, you ought to be able to afford to buy a house. You ought to be able to live in safe neighborhoods. You ought to not have your communities flooded with fentanyl. And that too has gotten harder with Kamala because of Kamala Harris's policies. Now, I've been in politics long enough to do what Kamala Harris does when she stands before the American people and says that on day one, she's going to work on all these challenges I just listed. She's been the vice president for three and a half years. Day one was 1,400 days ago, and her policies have made these problems worse. Now, I believe that we have the most beautiful country in the world. I meet people on the campaign trail who can't afford food, but have the grace and generosity to ask me how I'm doing and to tell me they're praying for my family. What that has taught me is that we have the greatest country, the most beautiful country, the most incredible people anywhere in the world, but they're not going to be able to achieve their full dreams with the broken leadership that we have in Washington. They're not going to be able to live their American dream if we do the same thing that we've been doing for the last three and a half years. We need change. We need a new direction. We need a president who has already done this once before and did it well. Please vote for Donald Trump. And whether you vote for me or vote for Tim Walz, I just want to say, I'm so proud to be doing this and I'm rooting for you. God bless you and good night. Drawing from his own life, Vance shares the story of his grandmother struggling to pay heating bills underscoring the conservative values of self-reliance and endurance. This personal touch portrays him as someone who understands the challenges of ordinary Americans while positioning Harris's policies as part of the problem. For many, it reinforces the belief that expansive government and liberal approaches worsen economic difficulties, making the American dream harder to achieve. His focus on fentanyl and community safety taps into public concerns over rising crime and drug-related issues, which he links to a breakdown in law and order under the current administration. By invoking Donald Trump as the solution to these challenges, Vance appeals to the conservative vision of strong leadership and decisive action. He calls for a leadership change, framing it as essential for restoring economic stability, safety, and individual opportunity. Vance's examples of escalating energy prices, food insecurity, and public safety resonate with a fear of losing control over basic needs and personal security. By framing these crises as consequences of Harris's policies, he channels public dissatisfaction into a broader critique of the current administration. His accusations also serve a psychological function directing blame toward Harris as he notes her. Three and a half years in office and her. Day one was 1,400 days ago. This kind of rhetoric offers a target for those feeling economically strained or unsafe, solidifying the narrative that change is necessary to reverse the decline. 